What if you find several records that you think relate to your ancestor, but all of the names are spelled differently? Do last name spelling variations still mean that's your ancestor? A viewer asked this question recently, and today we're going to spell it all out for you. So here we have Andrew, one of our Boundless Genealogy community members, who watched one of the videos and commented. He said, I was still plowing through census records to find an elusive fourth great grandma. There were quite a few discrepancies in surname spelling, but the ages, country of birth, and given names all matched up. So he came across a pretty typical problem we all run into, and often our ancestors didn't have a standardized way that they spelled their name. And even if they did, you never know who was writing down the information on the records that we find about them. Perhaps they were writing the information or perhaps they were just telling it to someone else who was writing the information down for whatever the purpose was of the document that that information is on. So for example, uh, if it was a record made at the county level, it might have been a county recorder or a clerk writing the information. And if someone else was writing the information down, they would usually just write down the spelling the way they heard it. So depending on how your ancestor said it and how the person interpreted it, it could often have different spellings. Then you have to imagine the accent that your ancestor was speaking with. Maybe they were a new immigrant who had a thick foreign accent. Uh, and so the way they pronounced the name and the way someone who'd been in the United States a while was going to write it down might be very different. Uh, even if they'd been in the United States for a long time, Imagine the difference between a New York accent and a Georgia accent even today. That can cause spelling variations as they were recorded in the genealogy records. Based on Andrew's comment, here are some of the name variants that he found for his great-grandmother. Arneson, Arnerson, Amison. But if I say all of those quickly, Arneson, Arnerson, Amison, they don't sound that much different, so I can see how these variants would have been, would have come about. The trick is, how do we account for that in our searches? We have to be open-minded when we're searching for the records of our ancestors based on the fact that they might have different spellings that it was recorded under. I want to take a look at a quick example from my own research. This was a woman who was named Rosaline Commerce. That was her maiden name. But as I searched her throughout her life, she was found under a lot of variant names. So let's take a look at a few of her documents and the variations in the spellings, and then talk about how we can tell if the various spellings we're finding are actually our ancestor or someone else. So this first document is a Washington County, Kentucky marriage register from 1875, and it is the marriage of J.F. Doolin, D-O-O-L-I-N, with Miss Rosaline Commerce. And the witnesses were C.W. Dowling, and C commerce. I think those are important clues to notice about this record. Next, we have a, an 1880 U.S. federal census, also from Washington County, Kentucky. We have listed J.F. Dolling with Rosaline Dolling, and Rosaline is married, age 25, born in Tennessee, to a father born in Spain and a mother born in Ireland. Next, we have the 1900 U.S. Federal Census in Jefferson County, Kentucky. So this is a different county, but it's not that far away. And it happens to be the county that the city of Louisville is located in. And Louisville was a big draw for people who wanted to go and live and work in the city. Um, this time, a Rosa Dolan is found in the household of James Commerce. And she is listed as his sister, born April 1856, age 44, widowed, mother of zero, born in Tennessee, father born in Louisiana, and mother born in Alabama. And then the fourth record for Rosa is a marriage bond from Washington County, Kentucky in December of 1901. This time it is a marriage between Charles Donahue and Mrs. Ro Rosa Dowling. All right, so let's take a look at the name variants we found. We have the last names Doolin, Dowling, Dolling, and Dolan. And then for the first names, we have Rosaline, 
Rosa and Rosaline with a different spelling. So again, if you're just listening to the sounds of these last names, Doolin, Dowling, Dolling, Dolan, they sound very similar. And it may have been hard for whoever was recording it to know which exact last name this was for this woman. So how can we know if all of these records for all of these various names is actually for the same person? Well, here's the thing we do. We compare the clues across all the records and start to notice where they all interconnect and where they are similar. So three of these records were in Washington County, Kentucky. So we have a nice central place. The other is in Jefferson County. So we need to make sure there's other connecting clues within that document to make sure that we're not off base. Uh, next, in the first marriage record, we come across Rosaline's maiden name, which was Commerce, as well as a witness, C. Commerce, in that record. And then again, in the third record, even though it's in a different county, we come across that name's name again. Uh, Rosa Dolan is in the household of a James Commerce, who is her brother. And that relationship is spelled out. So that definitely seems like a good clue that it's her because that was her maiden name and this is her brother. Um, then we have another clue in the second and third records that of her age and that she was born in Tennessee. And her age is fairly consistent over those 20 years between the records. So overall, even though we have different spellings, spelling variations in these four records, we have enough clues that connect us from record to record that we see a pattern that really starts to let us know that this is the same woman over time uh, with, you know, her name spelled various ways for whatever reason, it doesn't matter. Uh, but we have other good clues to tie in. So the key, when you come across variants in the spelling of records that you think relate to your ancestor, what you need to do, the key is to look at the clues as a whole from record to record across all the records that you find and never let one uh, fact or spelling be the standalone proof or disproof that this is or isn't your ancestor. Sometimes you have to look at many records and see how they interconnect to really start to form the proof that this is the same individual and these are the all of the connecting clues that show their identity. Thanks for that comment, Andrew. Keep those comments and questions coming, folks. I wanna help you get the most you can out of the records you're finding in your family history search.